Hi everyone, and welcome back. This is me Andrew with Juliana in the Agatha Christie's ABC Murders. Um, so I left off and we had clues to solve after speaking with the victim's sister. Or our second victim's sister is what I should say. So, um, based on the information we have, we get to put together what we think she did. Anyway, so... This is all in the hopes of creating a reconstruction, and then we can get on with the next parts. Anyway, um, alright, that's probably a good one. Um, let's see. Betty had probably planned to meet someone that evening, and... Nope, that's not it. Okay, uh... Nope, alright. A company. Okay, fine. No, nope. all right. Um. Okay. Betty had lied to Donald because she was out with another man or had a date with another man. Great. Uh, did Betty know her assailant? I'm gonna guess the unaccompanied guest. So probably not. No, that's not it. Okay, then Betty used to go out a great deal. Nope. Okay. There are a lot of visitors in town this time. <sighs> really? Okay. Uh, the... Yeah. The man to do Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Yay, another one. Okay. Hopefully it won't be this bad. Alright. Nope. Megan really liked Donald Frazier. Yes. Um. Nope. Megan had a soft lot spot for Donald. Okay. Um, did Megan Barnard had the motive for killing her sister? Uh. Okay. Never mind. Nope. Okay. Betty was see Okay. Megan was jealous of... Yes. Great. Hastings always pays more attention when young women are being questioned. Nothing you need to worry about there. All right. So, I think we'll head out and go to the ginger cat like we were supposed to. Whoa. Um, to meet with Donald Frazier. Um, so that's the... You've seen Frazier, Hastings. What is your feeling? Okay, so he's a big chap. Fragile isn't exactly the word I'd use for him. Um, I talked to the landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at 11. Yeah. Fraser wasn't home yet. Megan Barnard said he is a reserved character, but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. Okay. So, uh, there might be some audio issues. I seem to remember that when I did a playthrough or two. It was only the one playthrough, but, um, so you might have to hear me read. I'm going to go with, I'm not the best. If it's screwed up, I might redo it in post. So, um. All right. Have you seen the 50 trophies in the timelines you can unlock? All right. So, I've finished with this subject. Okay. I don't want this young man here. Be quick and do what you must. Understood, lady. Got it. Because, yeah. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You Hercule Poirot? 
Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me? Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. First, we will observe him. This man looks suspicious. Leave me alone. There we go. There we go. Ish. Donald Fraser is in a terrible state, as if he hadn't slept all night. And he's drinking white horse. Leave me alone. Mm. All right. We'll finish this. Tell me that it's a mistake. That Betty isn't dead. Sadly, your lady friend has been murdered, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. If she had listened to you, she would still be alive. Should I take that to be a confession? With that sort of thinking, you must send a lot of innocent men to prison. Under different circumstances, I might even find you amusing, sir. It's no time for amusement, Mr. Fraser. It is time to find your fiance's killer. Did you know what her plans were for the evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. And you believed her? And why not, sir? She was my fiancée. That did not stop her from lying to you before. Betty was not a bad girl, but she did like to take advantage of a success with men. How dare you sully her memory! I am not interested in memories of her, Mr. Fraser. I am looking for a killer, and I need you to be my closest ally. That is, unless you have something to hide. Of course I don't. Très bien. So, what were we saying? Where were you yesterday evening? Uh, I looked everywhere for her, but in vain. When she said she was going to have dinner with her sister on a weekday, I thought it was strange. I tried not to think about it, but I was like a lion in a cage. Mm, I was convinced so she was lying. So I went round all the restaurants in the town. When I didn't find her, I went to the next town. But nothing. I must have got home about midnight or one o'clock. Did anybody see you? I don't think so. I didn't talk to anybody. I was so furious. Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poro. I thought the victim's young man was here. Yes, he's all yours, Chief Inspector. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Yay, more clips. <laughs> um, did Donald have a motive for her murder? No. Uh, bet he used to go out a great deal. Oh, what are you? Ah, uh, no. Jeez. Okay. There we go. Donald. Jealousy. Um, Donald does not have an alibi. Yay! 
all the things. Hastings looks silly tease. He really doesn't like Fraser. Hastings is bound to tell me what he thinks about Fraser later on. Now is not the right time. No need to insist. I will certainly have the op Okay. All right, I think since uh, we can't question further, we can't talk to Jap, we will away and head back to the apartment or wherever. Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree, without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. Alright, yay, reconstruction number two. Almost the there. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. So Both we're of advancing. them walk slowly to hut number six. Because that's the hut we found her in. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. So we know the victim probably removed the belt. So, or someone. The killer tries to remove his victim's belt. She panics and tries to stop him. She runs away, pursued by her assailant. No, there is no sign of a chase. Things must have happened differently. Let us sink again, mon cher. Okay, I did that wrong. Whoops. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, Oops. a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. So we advance. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. They keep walking. Then she removes her belt. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Yay! Success! Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser, but them signing his crime to the is making sure that he is accused. Generous? And that was the murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless. But not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. Alright, I will stop this one here. Uh, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Constructive criticism is always welcome. 
Let us know if you would like to see something different, something new, uh, in the comments below. Greatly appreciated. Um, thanks. I will see you in the next meander. Bye-bye.